Vision presents Dr. James Strange. One of the great topics in archaeology these days seems to be the relationship of archaeology to literature. Would you like to address that issue for viewers? Well, of course. I don't really think it's an issue, but uh, the reason for that is because if you're doing, uh, trying to do a comprehensive view of any ancient civilization, you need as much archaeology and as many texts as possible. But I do think there is an issue whether one can use archaeological evidence by itself to make certain inferences about the culture and the people and how they lived and so on, absent the literature. Well, of course you can, but you cannot fill in near enough details without the literature itself. So I, th I think that's at least my stance on that particular subject. Would you like to give us an example from Sepphoris where you've been able to use literature to fill in the detail? Well, certainly, for example, in the uh, rabbinic literature of the early third century and later, we have references to two um, uh, um, shukim, of, sorry, I just lost the English word, uh, of two um, markets. All right, there are two marketplaces in ancient Sepphoris. There's an upper and a lower market. We're not told anything else. It's incidental to the story. You know, the story is about uh, how one rabbi assists another rabbi, even if the uh, the rabbi cannot physically get to the other locality, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in this case, we're we're digging in a in a lower area, and we have a rather magnificent building, which at first blush appears to be uh, something like a municipal judgeship or something of that sort the local court, the magistrate, but when we do more work within it, it seems to be used for economic purposes also. And it occurs to us, and then this helps us to understand what market might mean when they say lower market, because here we are in the lower city, and it seems to be upscale, uh, high prestige, uh, beautifully appointed, et cetera, et cetera, in which case maybe market simply means an enclosed building, because. In the, in the Roman world it sometimes does, where one exhibits goods, uh, luxury goods, and actually there is an economic transaction. And we find exactly that. We find coins on the floor, and where we don't find coins, we find copper nails, which suggests there were furniture there. The furniture is, I think, for displaying, and the, the copper coins are the change that's dropped that they don't bother to pick up, basically pennies. What era was that market that you found then? In that case, we're talking about the 4th century, beginning of the 4th century of the Common Era, 4th century AD. Because in about the middle of the century, the building finally is abandoned and finally comes down. So we're dealing with literature that is cotemporary with the building itself? Uh, that's right. We're dealing with literature which knows <laughs> what it's talking about in terms of people are observing this uh, upper lower market situation which the rabbis are simply using to illustrate the legal point they want to make. So in fact, that's better for us. Someone might argue with us that if somebody were writing about a, a marketplace, and particularly a well-appointed marketplace, it might be a piece of propaganda literature, and the thing may not actually exist. But since it's incidental to the narrative, that tells us that the author knows that we know <laughs> that this thing exists. He can't make it up. The criticism about literature then frequently seems to be directed at the Bible or the scriptures. The reason people um, do make this kind of distinction uh, about the Bible between that which is historical and that which is not is because they've noticed that the biblical authors have one, one very large uh, part of their viewpoint attached to the meaning of these events, to the theology, as it were, of these events. So particular people outside the faith tradition might say, well, that's really sort of a, a bias. It's really sort of an ideology. Uh, you know, not, fundamentally not understanding the way we read an ancient document is determined by the document itself. So if the document really wants to make a theological point, we let it make the theological point. But we also look for exactly those kinds of incidental mentions which then yield uh, an objective for us, something that we can check archaeologically. We certainly can't check the theology, but we can certainly do something about the historical events that are mentioned or the places or whatnot. 
you mentioned earlier on about the literature issue being a problem of anthropology. The anthropological issue is that archaeology is archaeology is, is archaeology. So you don't really need a text to be able to do your archaeology. Well, that's perfectly true, but even these anthropologists who have taken this extreme position have themselves discovered that sometimes the texts help. <laughs> the one that comes to mind right now is that anthropologists who dug up uh, 18th century um, uh, shops and discovered smashed um, pottery and they could deduce that it was stacks of 12. Why was it in stacks of 12? It's kind of trivial, but when they found the bills of sale where they had bought it from the train that was coming through, or in the wagon train in this case, they'd already comes in stacks of 12 because it fits in the crate that way. <laughs> so it's not terribly important in a way, but it, it solves a problem. <laughs> Would you like to comment on the specializations that exist in archaeology these days? It seems to be associated with almost every science that is known to man. That's really true, and, and I think uh, we're stuck with that one. We're going to develop specialization no matter what. And the reason is the amount of knowledge, data, and evidence, if you like, that we can now extract from the archaeological material is so huge that one human br brain or one human mind can't keep all of it at once. <laughs> so if we can sort of uh, parcel it out and let people examine it uh, one section at a time, we have a chance to get some depth examination, though someone still has to put all that information together and say what it means. Well, thank you very much, Jim Strange.